All right, Michael, take it away. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Michael Lindemann, and I was uh, intern this summer working underneath Michelle Wilbur, and we were looking at the cold weather effects on electric vehicles. So there was four main areas of work this summer. Uh, number one was cold weather electric cars, like Chevy's, uh, Chevy Bolts, Teslas, that sort of stuff. Number two was the municipality of Anchorage has an electric box truck that they just bought that they wanted us to look at some of the data. Number three, we, I was doing a little bit of rail belt load growth analysis. And here at the end, I've been looking at the Arctic Road Rally. So coming into this, I basically had zero experience with uh, Jupyter Notebook, which is what Michelle uses and want us to use. I had done a little bit of Python experience before, and I had a ton of MATLAB experience, but we basically didn't want to use MATLAB uh, at all. So when we were looking at cold weather effects on electric vehicles, uh, there was a total of 10 vehicles that we were looking at. There were eight vehicles up in Fairbanks and two down here in Anchorage. Uh, most of them were Teslas. And so everybody with a Tesla, they had this app called Teslab installed on their phones. Teslab exported uh, trip data. So each trip, the Teslab would export us uh, some information. The one Chevy Bolt owner, had to take all of the data by hand and uh, he gave us a, a nice Excel document with that. So here's a sample uh, Tesla export. So you can see that uh, in the sample over there on the left side, the, this particular owner has uh, two different uh, Teslas and we have a start time and end time and then a coordinate. Um, some of the later Tesla exports had a starting coordinate and an ending coordinate which was actually really cool because with those, I could pull all of the weather data for everywhere the car drove. Um, there's a temperature that's given with the Tesla export, but it's not accurate like at all. We, we don't know where they were pulling their temperature from, but it was completely wildly inaccurate. So I had to use uh, NOAA weather data and I was able to combine all of this stuff and get this graph here. Um, and so, Basically, in this graph, the, the lower the temperature, or the lower the, the number, the better, meaning more efficient. Um, and so you can see as it gets colder out, the uh, electric vehicles lose efficiency. And um, so next, I did something kind of interesting. And in my personal vehicle, I, uh, I plot every, or I, I log every time that I fill up. And using all of the logs that I have, um, I was able to calculate the a very similar graph, but for an internal combustion engine. So you can see that with an internal combustion engine, there's a, a, a the efficiency goes down as it gets colder as well. And this is just because I'm running, you know, the heater, I'm letting the vehicle warm up, um, and all that sort of stuff. So next, I looked at uh, the municipality of Anchorage. They have an electric box truck. And they purchased it back in 2021. They've had some pretty serious uh, teething pains, you could say, with it. It's had quite a few problems, but it was the very first one off the assembly line. So that's sort of to be expected. The Muni provided me CSVs from the box truck. Each one was approximately a month long, but it was broken down uh, into a million lines. So there was a million lines of data and that took quite a bit of parsing to get through. Um, and basically using all of that data, plus they had a smart charger that they plugged it into every time. I was able to combine all of that and get this graph that you see here, which was very similar to the previous electric vehicle graph where as it gets colder, it's gotta keep the battery warmer. And obviously they're running the heater and the truck and stuff like that. So the efficiency goes down. So this is the slide that we created for the DOE. Uh, they were mainly interested in looking at uh, how much it costs to charge it and what the CO2 amounts that it would create compared to an electric or compared to a gasoline box truck. So if you look here, you can see that the electric box truck would cost about $1,050 to charge per year. And that's assuming they drive it about four days a week and 30 miles per day. Now, if you look at a gasoline box truck, that box truck is gonna be almost triple the cost of fuel and would emit um, almost right around double the CO2 um, of the electric box truck. So the last thing that I started working on was the rail belt load growth analysis. So this basically deals with um, looking at how, how the, the load is gonna increase as more and more people shift to electric vehicles. Um, there is a couple issues here. 
So first off, Chugach has an NDA with the person that provides all of their data. And Chugach Electric is pretty much the only one uh, that has solid electric vehicle data. But they do have um, some graphs that they've shared with the public. So I basically took those graphs and I imported them into this program called Tracker. And I was able to plot and get exactly uh, how much or how many electric vehicles were at each point um, on the graph. The next issue that I ran into was that the Alaska DMV doesn't have easily exportable data for 2018. And I ended up actually doing some HTML programming here because they, they post all of it to their website, but it's as a table and there's no way to really export it. So using some HTML programming and some Python programming, I was able to create these bottom two graphs, which are pretty interesting. Um, you can see that the, the number of registered vehicles in Alaska has actually dropped off by over 100,000 uh, since uh, 2016. And then coming in here on the end, the Arctic Road Rally, I've been getting ready for this. So we're gonna be driving electric vehicles from Fairbanks to Electric Point uh, on the Dalton Highway. And we're gonna um, start this Friday. So I'm sure some of you guys might be able to come check it out and see some of the stuff that we're working on or we're driving. I'm gonna be driving my personal vehicle. It's 2016 Tacoma as a support vehicle. And then I've also um, built an adapter for my generator. I have an 8KW generator. Uh, so I used to be an electrician and I built an adapter so that we can plug in uh, some of these electric vehicles to my generator if there is an issue. But we have done quite a bit of planning and there shouldn't be any issues, hopefully. So we'll see. And uh, questions. Does anybody have any questions? Hi, Michael, could you um, go back to your CO2 graph with the electric vehicles versus gas car? I was wondering, um, like, wh what emissions are coming from the electric vehicles? Like, is that assuming like coal is a power source or like, what are your assumptions there? Okay, so the the assumptions there are, um, they're from Chugach Electric, basically. Uh, I'm looking at Chugach Electric has given us a number for how many kilograms of CO2 um it it takes to create one kilowatt hour basically and i have the number here somewhere uh i'd have to i'd have to look for it but yeah that's where i got that number from and to verify that i also used uh, michelle wilbur my mentor has an electric alaska ev calculator that's online um and i used that Cool graph with uh, how temperature affects the efficiency of the EV batteries. Do you have any like ideas or data on the long term effects of cold temperature? So we there has been a, um, a fair amount of research into that too. Um, lithium batteries are not as affected long term. Like with a lead acid battery, if you freeze it, uh, the battery is pretty much junk. And lithium batteries, they are damaged um, if you freeze them, but most of these electric vehicles have uh, battery uh, systems in them that keep them warm and their, their batteries are all uh, very heavily insulated. So <clears throat> when we say uh, cold weather, basically the, the reason why we're seeing such a, 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 a noticeable drop off in this graph is because it's keeping the, the batteries warm. So the, the batteries themselves never really see uh, cold temperatures. They never see freezing, ideally, because they're keeping themselves warm all the time. Um, and that also, though, leads into the fact that the battery gets charged and discharged more because there's that energy has to come from somewhere. So it has to come from the battery pack. So it will make the battery pack um, not last as long as somewhere where it doesn't have to do that. I don't know if you can see my comment in the chat, but um, I wanted to make, I think I can maybe have a clue as to your drop off in registered vehicles is that when they initiated the Z tags, um, it doesn't require vehicles to renew their registration. So that may uh, be why there's such a drastic drop because any vehicle over I think 10 years, you don't have, you get what's called a Z tag and it's the last time you have to register it. 
That's a really good point. Um, nobody, uh, we hadn't thought of that yet. Um, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, we, we actually had not thought of that. We were wondering why we were seeing such a big drop. Um, but yeah, thank you. No worries. Michael, thank you so much. Um, just want to give one last chance. Does anyone have any other questions for Michael? No. All right. Oh, we got one coming in from fun question. So tell us a little bit more about the Arctic Road Rally. Like how many stations are you putting out there? And are you guys going to people camping out or I'm just curious? Yeah, no. So uh, let me pop down just one slide over. So um, there's going to be it's going to be over five days. So we're starting um, starting in fr on Friday. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to camp overnight in Coldfoot. I'm just looking at my notes here. Camp we're camping overnight in Coldfoot. Um, and that's sort of just like camping out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm bringing a tent, uh, and yeah, going to camp out. Um, and then once we get up to the North slope, Conoco Phillips is actually putting us up in their, uh, Kaparic oil field up there. Uh, it sounds like there's been quite a bit of interest from Conoco on going electric with their vehicles on the slope. If we can, ensure that they're going to work in the cold. Um, there's a couple points behind this. Number one, if they don't have to bring gasoline and, and less diesel, that's awesome for them. Number two, they're very environmentally uh, conscious up there. So anybody that's been up there, they've probably seen like they have those duck ponds underneath all of the, the vehicles. And those are just in case there's a small oil drip or anything like that, then the duck pond is there to catch that. Well, if you can convert all of that to electricity where you don't have to worry about people spilling diesel when they're fueling their truck or anything like that, they're they're very, very interested in that. Um, so yeah, so we've got about 10-ish vehicles um, that are gonna be driving up there. Um, we've got some of the new Rivians, we've got several Teslas um, and yeah, it should be a pretty awesome time. Just one more quick comment about the Arctic Road Rally. Um, coincidentally, I actually am going up to Dead Horse the same weekend that you guys are going up. Um, so it'd be cool if uh, if I could participate in some way or, you know, just run into you guys and say hi. Yeah, that'd be super cool if we could maybe meet up up there. Um, yeah, we'll have to be in contact. All right, cool. I'll, I'll contact you. All right, man. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, well, let's give a big round of applause for Michael. Oh yeah.